Hey everybody. Today we're using R to construct a linear model involving a categorical variable as an explainer. I'm going to stick to a parallel slopes model in this vid. I'll introduce an interaction term next time. Today I'm working with the crickets data set. This is in the model data package and I've loaded that up with library model data. I've also loaded up tidyverse with library tidyverse and gotten access to the crickets data set with data crickets. You'll see in lines five and six there on the left, I've also created a, a small new data set. I'll talk about that more at the end of this vid when I start using the predict command to make new, um, to make predictions on new observations. So let's just take a look at our data really quickly with glimpse. This is in the dplyr package, crickets. So we have observations of 31 different crickets. We're measuring the rate at which those crickets chirped and we are explaining that using two variables, the temperature at which the observations were made and the species of the cricket. So the species is a factor variable here, a categorical variable. In particular, it has two levels, O exclamationis and O nevaeus. My apologies if I'm mispronouncing either one of those. So let's get a plot here. Let's make sure that linear models are gonna be appropriate. So ggplot, crickets, and um, for our aesthetics, let's put temp on the x-axis, rate on the y-axis, and let's color it by species. And let's start just with a scatter plot, geom point. Okay, so we can see that we have fundamentally a linear relationship between temp and rate in each of these two different groups. So it does seem like it'll be okay to put in a linear model here. So let's add some regression lines. Let's let R um, do its default regression lines with geom smooth method equals quote LM for linear model. And let's go ahead and leave out the standard error ribbon with SE equals false. Okay, in particular here, I can see that the linear relationship in each of the two groups um, seems to have the same slope. That is, the rate at which the rate is increasing as temperature increasing doesn't change with different temperatures or from one species to the next. Now, if you really squint hard at this picture, you can see different slopes. Again, I'll talk more about that in my next vid. Here, however, a simpler model is probably better. Let's stick with that. So we're going to use the LM command for linear model and we wanna put the response variable first. So here rate is the thing being explained. We want the explanatory variables on the other side of this tilde. So we have two in this case, temp and um, species. So we separate those with a plus sign. And we have to specify also that we want the data to come from the crickets set. So let's just take a look at what we've got here with summary model. In particular, notice under coefficients, we have three different coefficients now, intercept, temp, and species O nevaeus. So our first goal here has to be to really understand what's going on with those three values. I have a couple of slides for that. So let's swap over to, um, to Acrobat for a second. What's going on underneath the hood here is that R is introducing a dummy, a dummy variable to encode whether or not a particular observation is of a exclamationist cricket or a nevaeus cricket. So let's call the new variable x2 here. x2 is going to take the value 0 for an exclamationist and a 1 for a nevaeus. And R is picking that encoding just alphabetically. Exclamationist comes before nevaeus. After um, introducing that new variable x2, it is just building a linear model in the standard way. So the linear model has this form b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2. So here x1 is representing temp. It's representing our quantitative variable, just like always. This gets called an additive or parallel slopes model because we are going to have the same slope for each of the two different levels of our factor variable. It gets called additive because the temp and species um, variables here are not interacting in, in any way. Um, they're both affecting the response variable independently of one another. Again, in my next vid, I'll, I'll add in an interaction term. I think this model is easiest to understand when we write it as a case-defined function. Since x2 only takes two different values, 0 and 1, 
we really have two different linear equations depending on whether x2 is 0 or 1. That is, depending on whether or not our cricket is exclamationist or nevaeus. In particular, for an exclamationist cricket, we have b0 plus b1 x1. Um, so b0 being the intercept, b1 being the slope. When we have a nevaeus cricket, that slope is exactly the same. It's still b1 but now the intercept has shifted. The intercept has shifted by the amount b2. So if we look at the output that R gave us from summary model, it's giving us exactly those three numbers, b0, b1, and b2. And in fact, it's giving them to us in order under this estimate column of the coefficients part of our output. So overall, we have this model. For O exclamationist crickets, negative 7.21091 plus 3.60275 x1, that is, times temperature. And for nevaeus crickets, it's going to be exactly the same, except the intercept is now shifted down by 10.06529. Okay, so let's swap back to R and actually add um, these regression lines for these two different groups in manually using the geom ab line command. So to start, I'm just going to copy and paste what I have for my scatter plot, like so. And as I said, let's use geom ab line to put in these lines directly. So um, geom ab line needs two pieces of information, slope and intercept. So I'm going to do the exclamationist crickets first. So for that reference level for which the um, variable x2 is equal to zero. Slope, as I said, is going to be 3.60275. That'll be the same for the nevaeus crickets. And the intercept is going to be given by the intercept term in my output here for my summary, for my summary of my model. So negative 7.21091. We may as well be fully accurate here. If I just hit enter right now, it'll put that line in black and it won't match up with my legend. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to add a color term here as well. O dot exclamationus. Hopefully I spelled that right. And I did. Okay, so um, before I comment on that at all, let's add in a line for the nevaeus crickets as well. So I'm going to copy and paste the first part of my geom ab line. And this time for my intercept, I am going to take the species O nevaeus thing right here, and I'm just going to add that in. So I'll just copy and paste that number. So there's my new intercept, and this time the color should go according to O dot nevaeus. Parenthesis, parenthesis, I think that's all I need. Okay, so there is... Um, a decent plot. The one thing I'm not in love with here is that my regression lines extend for the full range of my graph. I would really like to restrict the range for each of these to the range of the data. R does that by default um, here with my original ggplot. Um, I thought about doing that for this vid. It's a little more trouble than it's worth for a short video. I'll do that at a different time. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to do is to use the predict command to make um, a prediction for new data. So I said I had this new, cr this new crickets data set. Let's just take a look at that. It's really small, so I'll just print it out. We're imagining that we have two new observations. We have two different crickets, one exclamationus and one nevaeus, and we have the temperatures for them, but we don't have the rates at which they chirp. And we'd like to try and make a guess using this model. So um, the command we're going to use here is predict, of course, and we need two arguments. First of all, we need the name of the model. So here it's just model. And then we need the name of the data frame with the new observations. So that's new crickets. Oops, not new data, new crickets. Okay, in particular, notice that the new crickets data set has variables, species, and temp that have exactly the same names as in our original data set from which our linear model was built. That is the crickets data set. That's required when you're using the predict command. The explanatory variables have to match up exactly. So our output is a vector of length two. The first number here is representing the predicted chirp rate for a cricket of species O exclamationus with um, 
an ambient temperature of 24 degrees. So looking down at my ggplot, exclamationist is the more orange um, line here. And of course, 24 is right here. The prediction of 79.25516 seems to match up with what I see in my plot. Similarly, similarly for the second observation in my new crickets data set, the Onaveus, that's the bluish green line here, with a temperature of 26, that would be right here, Going up to the bluish green line, we see a number closer to 76.